What is up guys? Welcome back to the second video in this Next.js Crash Course series. So if you missed the first video where we go over the course introduction, be sure to check that out. But in this video, we are going to dive into what Next.js is, kind of what you can use it for, what it offers, and then we're going to actually use the create next app command and take a look at the basic starter boilerplate code and go into how it's structured and how you can start using it. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the Next.js website. So you can find this by going to nextjs.org. And as I scroll down it, you can see it's a really modern website and it gives us a lot of information. But the part that I want to take a look at is this part here, why Next.js? So why are all of these companies using Next.js? Well, a bunch of different reasons. So these reasons here are some of the reasons why Next.js is so popular. As you can see, we have pre-rendering. So we have statically generated and server rendered React components. We have CSS in JS. So any way that you want to add CSS in your project, Next.js supports that. There's zero configuration, so automatic code splitting, file system based routing, hot reload, all of this stuff. And it's ready for production, so it has a small build size. So as you can see, all these companies use Next.js. So you can actually go to their showcase and see a bunch of the sites that use it. We have finance sites, news, e-commerce, creative, and entertainment. But as you can see just from here, Netflix, TikTok, Fortnite, Hulu, all these sites use it. So let's, I want to dive deeper into Hulu. So as you can see, this site loads pretty fast. And if we inspect it and look at the code behind it, we can see that it is indeed a Next.js site. So wherever you see JSX dash and then these numbers and this ID underscore underscore next, that means it is built using Next.js. So as you can see, it offers a lot for us and all of these companies trust Next.js and use it. So you might be wondering how can you use it? Well, here are the docs. So you can go to nextjs.org slash docs. We're in the getting started section. So to set up, all we need is this one command. So before you begin, make sure you have Node.js installed on your machine and you can use Mac, Windows, or Linux. So all the major operating systems are supported. So for the setup, we can use a command create next app. So if you're familiar with React, using create react app, you can install Next.js the same way. So what I'm going to do is simply copy this command here. So I am in my terminal right here and just navigate to where you want to store this project. And then I'm simply going to paste that command just like that. And then when you hit enter, it will walk you through a setup process. So first it will ask you what your project is named. So I'm going to name this project next JS tutorial, just like that. And then it will ask if you want to use the default starter app or an example. So Next.js has I think it's 190 plus examples on their GitHub. So you could start from one of those repositories, but for now, we're just going to use the default starter app. So now it will install everything we need. All right, there we go. So we successfully created our project. Here's where I'm storing it. And it gives us a couple of commands. So we're going to do what they recommend first, which is to CD into our project and then run the yarn dev command, which will start a development server. So let me CD into my project and run yarn dev. Now our project will be available on localhost 3000. So let me go there. And there we go. As you can see, this is the default boilerplate. So it loaded pretty quick. We have a couple links to documentation, learn examples, and deploy. 
So why don't we open this up in a text editor right now? So I'm going to come back here and my server, and I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. Now you can use any IDE that you like, but I will be using Visual Studio Code in this tutorial series. Okay, so as you can see over here, these are all of the files that Next.js gave us to start with. So these two folders up here, we will not be touching. .next, this folder here, has all of the build files in it. And then this node modules is are all the files that you will install via npm or yarn. So we're not going to touch that either. Now the pages directory is where you will be doing most of your work. So as you can see, we have a folder called API and we have a file index.js. So if I open this index.js, this is the main file. And the code here is what you saw when we ran our app. And there's a couple of things to note in here. First, we are importing head from next slash head. And what this is, is it allows us to pass things into the head of our page. So for example, the title or our favicon or our description, keywords, any of that's meta information. Next up, we have this line here. So export default function home. And then everything is wrapped inside of there and is encompassed in a return statement. So this is how you add new pages and it's fairly simple. You are just exporting this function home and then returning code and everything is wrapped around this div here. So if you want to make a new page, all you do is export default function about and then return whatever you want to return. So in here, this is just JS, JSX, so just standard HTML, not really that interesting. Down here is one of the ways that we can add CSS into our project using this JSX. So we'll go more into this, but this is how they style right here. And that's all that is in this page. Next up is API. So if I open this up, we see hello.js. So Next.js supports a bunch of various APIs. So you can go to this documentation here to check that out. We can use this to write our own API routes. And this will come in handy. And when we write, and when we look at building our main project, the social media dashboard, when we interact with the YouTube API or the GitHub API, we will be writing code in a file. So we'll name this youtube.js inside our API folder. And we will interact with that API, return some JSON, and then access that through our pages. And if I run my server right now, and I go to the local host, if I go up here and I nav navigate to slash API slash hello, which is the name of that API file, you'll see we actually get that JSON response and we can see that. And an example of that, on my personal website, if I go to my website slash gear, you'll see a gear repository of all of the gear that I use. And this data right here is not hard coded. This is actually being taken from an API that I wrote. So if I go to slash API slash gear, this is what that page is pulling data from. And you can see all of the data here corresponds to the data on that page. So ID one, software zero, item laptop, title is Apple MacBook Pro, blah, blah, blah. And the URL is this. And if I go back to that page, laptop, Apple MacBook Pro, and the URL goes here to Amazon. So any file in here will be treated as a page for your website, except 
the files in this API folder. So API is specific to Next.js and should not be changed. So that's what we have for pages. Next we have public. So public is where all of your assets are stored. So for example, any images, any CSS that you want to access globally can all be stored inside here. Next we have our git ignore file. So any files that you don't want to be committed to GitHub, such as our local ENV files, will be added in here and then they will not be tracked. Next up we have package.json. Again, this is just standard for any uh, JavaScript framework. You've probably seen this if you've used React. Basically just holds some information for our project, name, version, all of this stuff, any scripts you might have, and then any of the dependencies. So that's that. Next we have our readme. This is the standard readme that comes with the Next.js project when you run create next app. So you can change this if you want, but nothing too special going on in here. And finally, we have our yarn.lock file, which is auto-generated. We will never be editing this directly, but again, when we import things via yarn, they will end up in here. So that's our basic file structure. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. So we took a look at what Next.js is, and we explored the basic starter boilerplate. So next up, we will add some code to our project and explore all of the basics of Next.js. So just a little preview, we will be editing these pages here, adding some new pages. We'll be looking at CSS support, so how we can add a global style sheet, how we can do inline CSS, all that stuff. We'll be looking at data fetching, so get static props, get initial props, that sort of thing, as well as fetching it using our API. We're going to look at static files, so how you can include images in your project. And then we're going to look at environment variables or API keys, and that will go hand in hand with the data fetching. So that's what's in store for next video. So if you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.